The role that Ben Askren played will always be underappreciated. Ever since signing with the UFC this year, what Ben Askren really brought to the table was something that was necessary in 2019. After trading with Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson, the level of excitement that Ben Askren brought to the UFC at that point was very much so unheard of in the welterweight division, especially when his teammate Tyron Woodley was a champion and he was not necessarily the most fan favorite fighter out there. So for him as the undefeated outsider, Bellator champion, 1FC champion, to come into the UFC and cause such big commotion, it wasn't really that hard to imagine how much attention Ben Askren really would get. However, with the attention Ben Askren captured, he also had to walk the walk. So in today's video, I want to talk about the destruction of Ben Askren. Now that Ben Askren is retired from the sport of mixed martial arts, let us take a look back at the beginning of his UFC career. As the undefeated former Bellator and 1FC champion of the welterweight division, before entering the UFC, Ben Askren could have easily been seen as the second most famous fighter MMA fighter to never enter the UFC right after Fedor Emelianenko. So when the news broke that Ben Askren would come out of retirement and enter the UFC, by being traded with Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson, people really couldn't wait to see him fight inside the octagon. And when the day came for that fight to happen, the outcome really caused a lot more controversy than whatever Ben Askren said before entering the UFC or even having his first UFC fight. Being completely dominated by ruthless Robbie Lawler in the first round, Askren was able to put Robbie Lawler into a submission and he was able to officially choke him out. Now a lot of people had their opinions about the outcome, however the most important thing that we also have to remember are the facts that occurred in the fight. Yes, in the opening of the fight, Ben Askren got completely smashed, slammed to the mat. In my opinion, he got knocked out and then came back and obviously came back to win. Now as for the finish, well sure, you cannot blame Herb Dean for doing what he did. It really did look like Robbie Lawler went out. You cannot really avoid that. But it was so befitting for Ben Askren to have such an outcome. As the most controversial guy to enter the UFC in a very long time, to have a very controversial ending to your very first fight in at the UFC really stirred the pot even more and the people really wanted to see Ben Askren go in there and lose terribly. And that was precisely something that Ben Askren was not shy from doing. He was very much so open to go in there and go after Dana White and everybody in the welterweight roster. Even beyond that as well, saying that he could possibly go in there and fight Khabib and he was doing everything that he needed to to get his name value to where it needed. As a newcomer into pretty much a pretty stale division at the time in terms of name value and hype, Ben Askren really had to set himself apart from the competition and he did that. And that is really something necessary in this fight game. Sure, let's just assume that Ben Askren would have entered the UFC as the typical undefeated outside champion that would just go in there and fight in the UFC as a good boy, never talk trash and be as humble as he can and just, you know, be a pretty boring fighter just be another fighter. If he did that, he would have never really caused this ripple effect that he did. Because he was so open and he was so outgoing, what he was able to accomplish was name value. And his name value carried over to Jorge Masvidal. Leading up to their fight, Ben Askren went completely out on his opponents. In comparison to Robbie Lawler, who is a very respectable fighter and obviously a legend of the game, he never really went ahead and just talked trash about Robbie Lawler, as he himself had respect for him. However, this was a big contrast to his follow-up opponent in Jorge Masvidal. It was clear that Jorge Masvidal really wanted to go in there and defeat Ben Askren as badly as he could. And can you really blame him? Ben Askren called him a lot of names, went ahead and really made him look like a very silly individual. He really called Jorge out on his manhood. He made jokes that Jorge didn't show up to the press conference, that he was able to corner Jorge Masvidal and he had no other option but to take the fight and he really made it seem like Jorge Masvidal was being psyched out by him. Now I'm not here to talk about the psychology these two had before their fight. I'm trying to say that what Jorge Masvidal and Ben Askren were to accomplish was a very high profile fight that in my opinion was really the most important fight on that card. Because their 3 round fight was a lot more anticipated than the John Jones versus Santos fight which was the main event of the night. And I think that is really the biggest 
part that Ben Askren played in this whole deal. I think that a lot of people can look at the person who is playing the bad guy role or the trash talking role. Now this role is a very risky role to play. If you're successfully going in there and defeating your opponents, talking trash before and after the fight, you instantly become a sensation. People will like you and people will hate you. But the most important part of it all is the fact that people are invested in you. And that was precisely what Ben Askren did in this entire game. Because let's not forget about it. This is professional fighting. At the end of the day, this is a profession and these athletes need to make money. And how do you really make money? It's not just because you're the best fighter in the world that some rich guy is going to pay you a million dollars. No, no, no. You're going to get paid what you bring in. And if you have no name value, then you will essentially bring nobody in other than your couple family members. And I will tell you now, and this might shock you, but the paycheck you're going to get from that night is not going to be all that much. So Askren being the professional that he is, he was also a very good showman. So by doing this, he not only increased the revenue that he would make from that event and that fight, he also increased the entirety of the welterweight division as a subsequence. So when Jorge and Ben finally fought and Jorge was able to knock Ben Askren out in 5 seconds with the most devastating flying knee in the history of the UFC, the fact that Ben Askren lost in itself was already a big deal. The fact that he never lost to begin with and the fact that he lost by way of a flying knee that stiffened him out was just already a viral hit whether or not it was Ben Askren. But because of Ben Askren's name being attached to it, this launched Jorge Masvidal into superstardom. Masvidal was always a very well respected and well known fighter. However, with this win, he became a superstar. He then went ahead and fought Nate Diaz for a BMF title. And I am not trying to say that these two only fought because of Ben Askren. No, maybe, maybe, or maybe not. We wouldn't know. But one thing is for sure. The hype and steam that Jorge Masvidal got behind him would never have been as high if it wasn't for the Ben Askren fight. And this is exactly the role that Ben Askren chose to play. If Ben were to go in there and really convincingly defeat Jorge Masvidal, then his name value would have just skyrocketed even more. But if he were to lose, then his opponent's name all of a sudden becomes a very relevant name. Now, Ben Askren didn't do this from the kindness of his heart. It was just something that he had to do and that was necessary. And also, it was a risk that he knew he was taking. However, for me as the spectator, I can only be happy that Ben Askren chose to take that route. Because if he did not, then Ben Askren would just become another fighter that we just as the spectator do not care about. Ben Askren's return against Damian Maya was a make or break moment. If he couldn't win that fight, then who else could Ben Askren fight at this later stage of his career? Because keep in mind, Ben Askren, he was a retired fighter and he is already at the later stages of his career. Being 35 years old, Ben Askren was never really quite in his prime when he was entering the UFC. So another loss would really mean the end of his career. So for him to go in there against a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu specialist and him being a wrestler, this really did not scream like the best matchup that he could have had for his return. However, if he's not able to beat Damian Maya right now, then when is he going to be able to beat him? So for him to know this, he agreed to fight Damian Maya and these two were the headline a UFC Fight Night card. Now against Damian Maya, Ben Askren really tried his best. I would say that he really put up a very good fight. The fact is that Ben Askren really never had the complete game that was necessary to compete against somebody like Damian Maya. In the striking department, if you take a look at it, Ben Askren, yeah, okay, sure, he was able to land a couple of punches, but that is bound to happen in a fight, isn't it? He never really was able to land something that would put Damian Maya in real trouble, and neither would you expect him to. He never really had the biggest of a punch, he was never really going to knock out Damian Maya, and if he were to take him down, what is he going to do? Submit Damian Maya? I don't really think so. So all the success that Ben Askren had was really all that he would ever get out of the fight, because because the longer the fight would last, the more that he would start to get tired. Because in my opinion, looking at it, Damian Maia was clearly the fighter that was a lot more ready to go 5 rounds as he already went a lot more 5 round fights in his entire career. Now when Ben Askren was able to take down Damian Maia, he was pretty much entering Damian Maia's terrain. 
that was his domain and it was a very risky game that he was playing. The problem however was the fact that that was the only game Ben Askren knew how to play and as a 35 year old fighter you can't really expect much to change from Ben Askren's style. So as he got submitted and choked out, that was the end of Ben Askren's career. And if you take a look back to it all, you cannot really say that Ben Askren's career was a failure. He became a champion in two different organizations, and when he entered the UFC, he was a very well-paid fighter. And in the end, that is really what matters when it comes to you doing a profession. Because this, this fighting game, that was how Ben Askren was really supporting his family. And not to say that he was a broke man, because he was well retired from the 1FC, but you can really honor the fact that he tried to come out of his retirement and really put himself up to the test against the world's elite in the UFC. And sure, he did not live up to the hype in terms of being successful inside the octagon and winning and still being undefeated. However, not many people can be undefeated inside the UFC's octagon. So what if he took a couple losses? What if he got knocked out by a flying knee in 5 seconds? So what? This is the fight game and people lose, but also people can win. And I think by the end of it, Ben Askren really did just do enough. So in the end, time really told. The Tale of Ben Askren. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. What did you think of Ben Askren's entire career? Leave it all in the comment section down below. As always, I have been Keenan.